I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the internal combustion engines. In fact, in this module of this course, we shall be discussing about several issues related to the operation of internal combustion engines and of course, several other thermodynamical aspects. So, before coming to the discussion of internal combustion engines, let us first review the you know concept from where the you know work output of the internal combustion engine can be related to the you know basic of thermodynamics that we have learned in thermodynamics course. So, you know that uh, in thermodynamics we have studied about heat engine. So, if I write heat engine because we shall be discussing about internal combustion engine. So, let us first briefly discuss about the heat engine that we have learned in our thermodynamics course. What is this? Very simple that schematically we can depict what we can see from the schematic depiction. So, this is the engine which produces work continuously while operating between these two temperature thermal reservoirs, one is at, at higher temperature, another one is at lower temperature and definitely we have studied the T h that is the temperature of the higher you know the you know higher temperature thermal reservoir and T l is the temperature of the lower thermal reservoir. Now, we are maintaining T h constant always and if we supply Q h amount of heat to this engine, we can get W amount of work and essentially to have it in a continuous manner, we need to supply, we need to reject this amount of heat to the heat sink. And what is the efficiency of the heat engine? Thermal efficiency that is W net by Q in and this is nothing but Q H minus Q L divided by Q H, because Q in in this particular configuration Q in is the Q H. So, we can write it this is 1 minus Q L by Q H. Of course, we can write it 1 minus T L by T H under reversible case. that we have studied. Why I am try trying to discuss this? Because this is very simple, you have studied it. Issue is, if we can somehow provide certain amount of energy in the form of heat to the engine, we can get work output. To have it, to produce this work continuously, there must be some amount of heat to be rejected. Now, see what we can see from this. We can see that uh, heat must be supplied to this device at the cost of that input energy you are getting always work output. So, can't we 
imagine can't we you know uh, take this concept to develop another engine in which by initiating combustion internally within the engine itself if we can produce some amount of energy that energy can be utilized to produce work. So, that is what is the concept. So, com concept of internal combustion engine is coming from the fact that we have to have some mechanism by which we can develop heat, we can produce heat internally by initiating combustion and at the cost of that generated heat we can get work output. So, this is the concept and this is coming from the concept of heat engine. So, uh, what we can do now let us think about a uh, case and if we try to implement the concept that we are getting from the heat engine perhaps we can have uh, work output. So, what we can do now we can uh, go to the next slide say we have one cylinder and the cylinder is fitted with one piston. So, this is piston. Now, the cylinder contains gas one working substance. Okay. So, this is gas. If we consider that the cylinder piston assembly is in equilibrium, so that means internal gas pressure is able to stand the weight of the piston along with the pressure that is due to atmospheric pressure. So, see atmospheric pressure is acting on the piston cylinder, uh, you know, piston and internal gas pressure is such that it, it balances the weight of the piston plus the force due to atmospheric pressure. What we can do if you would like to have you know little uplift of the piston. So, say we would like to have a new configuration of the piston and I would like to have we would like to have little uplift. So, this is say L D if you would like to have this amount of uplift of the piston definitely the gas inside the cylinder should be expanded. What we can do? We can supply heat to the cylinder to be precise to the gas that is there inside the cylinder. Say this is one temperature one thermal reservoir and this is the supply heat is Q H. Right. So, at the cost of this amount of heat which is supplied to the gas that is there inside the cylinder, we can raise the piston L D, right? we can have uplift. Now, issue is again we are trying to bring back the piston in its original position. So, that means, say we are bringing the piston again to the original configuration over here and for that what we need to do? We need to have downward movement of the piston and that is again L D. So, see this is the downward movement of the piston and it was the upward movement, movement of the piston. So, if we would like to bring back the piston from its new configuration to its original configuration, what we need to do? We need to extract some amount of heat from the gas that is there inside the cylinder. Say, if we can do it using this mechanism, say we have one another thermal reservoir and we are taking back the same amount of heat which was supplied to 
the reservoir. So, if we can have if we can extract Q L which is equal to Q H then perhaps we can bring back the piston from its new configuration to the original configuration. What is what we can understand if we go back to the previous slide exactly what we have seen in the context of the operation of the heat engine if we supply Q H amount of it we will be getting work output of course, second law of thermodynamics puts a restriction that some amount of heat must be rejected to sink to have work output in a continuous fashion. So, in a similar manner what we are doing we are supplying heat from a thermal reservoir in which temperature is maintained at T H definitely T H is greater than T L if we can a limiting case should be that the amount of heat the amount of heat which is supplied to the gas and at the cost of that heat we have uplift of piston by a distance L d. Next task is to bring back the piston to its you know original configuration we are you know extracting same amount of heat from the system what we can see that means, if we can connect this assembly piston cylinder arrangement to these two temperature thermal reservoirs by supplying heat we can expand gas we can have upward movement of the piston extracting heat from the gas we can have compression and piston will come back to its original position. That means, by doing this arrangement we can have you know a reciprocating motion of the piston that is there inside the cylinder. So, our objective was at the cost of this energy and by making such an arrangement we can have reciprocating motion of the piston if we convert this reciprocating motion of the piston to the rotary one by using connecting crank and connecting rod mechanism we can drive wheel. So, this is what is the concept of you know internal combustion engine. The name itself is internal combustion as I told you this amount of energy we should supply to the working substance. So, this is the gas if we can generate this amount of it by initiating a combustion process inside the cylinder itself, then perhaps we can have that heat energy to have the uplift of the piston and we also can have some arrangement. So, that heat should be extracted or taken away from the system and we will be having you know downward movement of the piston and if we can have this process in a cyclic manner we will be having this reciprocating motion and that should be converted into the rotary one by using crank and connecting rod mechanism. So, this is what is internal combustion engine. So, the concept of internal combustion engine is coming from a basic thermodynamics that we have learned and that is why it is the subject which is thermal engineering basic and applied. So, these two are correlated. So, whatever we have learned from our basic thermodynamics, thermodynamics course that will be applied now to you know that will be applied to have several processes right. So, why it is internal combustion? Combustion should be initiated internally inside the cylinder and it is because of this combustion the amount of energy that we will be getting that energy will be utilized to have the movement of the piston. So, with this basic understanding let us now, look at the basic components of the internal combustion engines. So, you can see that uh, I have tried to represent a schematic of the internal combustion engine essentially to show you the nomenclature of rather 
to identify several parts because using by depicting this you know uh, arrangement we have understand we, we, we have understood that you know uh, we need to have you know internal conversion conversion should takes place internally it is because of this conversion the amount of heat that will be liberated that will be generated that heat should be utilized to have the movement of the piston between two or uh, to have the reciprocating movement of the piston. So, to have all these processes we need several components and what we can see from the schematic all those components and I will discuss about all those components their objectives and uh, the total operation of the internal combustion engine. So, what we can see you know that so this is engine we can say this is engine cylinder. So, this is engine cylinder right and inside the cylinder we, are, we can see that is piston. So, this is the piston. So, the piston will be having to and fro movement between the between two spots and those are known as top dead center and bottom dead center. In some books it is also known as inner dead center and this is outer dead center. So, you know that uh, top dead center or bottom dead center these two are two different locations and the piston movement should be restricted between these two locations. Then what we can see? We also can see one is called intake manifold. Again if we go back to the previous slide what I told we are supplying heat to a working substance that is gas. So, this working substance should be heated it will expand and at the cost of this expansion we are getting uplift of the piston. Similarly, if we take away certain amount of heat from the gas it will compress and at the as a result piston will come back to its original position. Similarly, when we are talking about internal combustion engine definitely there must be combustion and because of which we are getting energy. So, combustion of what we need working substance. So, intake manifold that we can see from the schematic through intake manifold air is drawn into the cylinder. So, fresh air is drawn into the cylinder and that air goes into the cylinder through the intake manifold. Then you know that intake valve is there. So, the purpose of valve of course, you can understand it is spring loaded valve. So, valve spring is there. Since it is spring loaded valve normally the valve will be closed, but we have to open it by applying force on it. So, that is why you can understand that cam follower mechanism is there. So, depending on the requirement and as and when needed the valve will open. So, when valve is open air will go into the cylinder and then we also can see exhaust manifold. So, you know if we go back to the previous slide I have discussed we are supplying heat to the gas then because of this come because of this expansion of the gas piston will go up. If we need to take the piston to its original position we must extract certain amount of heat in a way what we can understand that means somewhat amount of heat must be rejected. So, here exhaust manifold is provided that after the combustion is completed the combustion gases should go out to the surroundings while the combustion gases are leaving the engine cylinder they are carrying some amount of heat and that is nothing but the loss of heat from the system. So, this is also valve. So, this exhaust valve should not be should not remain open always. So, as and when needed the valve will open. 
and you can see this is this is the connecting rod that you have studied in machine design course connecting rod and this is crank. So, this connecting rod crank this mechanism is very much essential to convert the reciprocating motion of the piston to the rotary one and if we can connect the shaft. So, the connect crank shaft will be getting rotary motion of the crank shaft and if we and wheels are connected to the shaft and we are we can rotate wheel. What we can see that means, piston will be having a reciprocating motion between these two locations. What are those top dead center and bottom dead center, dead center. So, once piston reaches at this location, there will not be further movement of the piston. So, movement of the piston should be arrested when it reaches either at BDC or at TDC. Now, what we can see? This is essentially the nomenclature of a special type of engine. I will be discussing those, but that part, I mean the special parts which are there here essentially for the a particular type of engine that I will be discussing later. So, what we can understand? If we take fresh air into the cylinder and if we can supply some amount of fuel and when the air fuel mixtures will be combusted, you know that when you are supplying fuel, the stored energy within the fuel that is chemical energy that would be converted to the heat energy. So, that heat would be utilized to create a thrust on the piston face and piston will have downward movement. So, if we draw this you know piston like this. So, this is piston face. So, this is piston face. Because of the combustion, the heat temperature of the combustion gases as well as pressure will be very, very high and that high pressure combustion gases, high pressure of the combustion you know uh, I can say working substance at that condition will create a thrust on the piston face. So, this is if we consider top dead center. So, piston will again come to the bottom dead center. So, this is the bottom dead center right. So, piston will come from TDC to BDC because now pressure acting on the piston face is high because of the combustion. And again arrangement should be there so that piston can be you know taken back to the TDC and that is why you have studied you know that whatever energy whatever amount of power we are getting because of this thrust created on the piston face that energy will be stored in the flywheel that you have studied in the context of dynamics of machine. And the amount of energy that again you need to bring the piston back from BDC to TDC because we need reciprocating motion of the piston. So, this is reciprocating motion. Okay. So, that means, once the combustion is completed, thrust which is acting on the piston face will allow piston to go back from TDC to BDC, but we need a continuous reciprocating motion. So, that means, piston will come again from BDC to TDC to bring piston from BDC to TDC, we need to borrow energy that energy should be borrowed from the flywheel. So, from flywheel we will get energy from where? Because the power that we are getting at the when I mean after the combustion is completed that power will remain stored in the flywheel and piston will borrow energy from the flywheel when it is needed that means, when it is coming from BDC to TDC. We shall discuss all those aspects you know uh, later. So, this is what we can see. Now, 
we also can see this oil pan this is very important you know why because you can see that the piston will be having reciprocating motion inside the cylinder so these two are the mating components cylinder wall and the piston outer wall so this is basically piston wall so piston is moving inside the cylinder so it is very uh, you know likely that frictional effect will be there so to reduce the frictional effect frictional losses otherwise the amount of power that is amount of you know power we are getting a part of that power will be utilized to overcome the friction not only that because the motion is continuous so frictional heating may lead to drastic damage of the you know uh, piston material so what is done this is lubricant oil pan so this is lubricant and that lubricant by virtue of churning action because crank is continuously rotating so by virtue of churning action lubricant will be supplied to the cylinder wall and that lubricant will try to reduce the friction also it will try to keep the temperature of piston wall to a you know tolerable limit so this is what we can see and as i told you that uh, we really cannot uh, we, we, we even we are supplying lubricant lubricant to the engine cylinder engine you know uh, cylinder wall but continuous motion may reduce the piston life piston material is very costly you can you can you can understand because it will withstand high pressure high temperature always and if we need to change piston frequently then it is not economically you know viable so what we need to do we can see that rings are provided let me draw it so basically what is done rings are provided you know at the outer periphery of the piston and these are known as piston ring depending on the requirement number of piston ring is decided so this is piston ring what we can understand that if we provide piston ring perhaps it is preventing piston to be in contact with the cylinder wall so because of frictional effect piston ring life will be destroyed but not the piston life we can you know change piston ring maybe uh, after certain interval of time so this is the objective of piston ring that you also can see from the schematic depiction and finally we also can see you know that uh, cooling water jacket right so let me tell you because we have our entire objective is to create high pressure and high temperature yet we are providing cooling water jacket why because if we provide cooling water jacket cooling water should be supplied and that water will reduce temperature of the cylinder wall this is provided only to you know increase the life of the cylinder wall otherwise thermal crack may generate but we also need to keep in mind that temperature reduction by supplying cooling water jackets should not be very much otherwise it will comp we need to compromise the engine efficiency right so that is why you know amount of cooling water that should be circulated through this jacket is also important aspect of the internal combustion engine operation so the entire purpose is entire purpose of this particular uh, arrangement is to reduce temperature of the engine cylinder so that engine cylinder life can be increased so now coming to because today i wanted to have little bit a discussion rather basic that we can relate uh, basic thermodynamics to this particular uh, component now as i told you this is the nomenclature of the uh, nomenclature of a particular type of engine 
So, if we try to classify engine, engine classification. See, uh, what we can understand? You know that uh, a working substance will be there and that working substance should be combusted to produce energy. Now, when you are talking about combustion, of course, that combustion should take place internally and that is why it is you know known as internal combustion engine. So, depending on the combustion type, engine can be classified you know. So, we can write one sub classification which is based on the types of combustion and sub classifications are spark ignition engine sometimes or frequently will be using the term SI, SI engine. Another type is compression ignition engine. Or in short CI engines. So, this classification is based on the types of combustion right, because we need to supply fuel, we need to supply air because without air we cannot initiate combustion, we cannot complete even combustion. We cannot initiate combustion, we cannot complete. We forget about completion, but we cannot even initiate combustion. So, we have to have combustion and depending on the types of combustion, we can classify engines, internal combustion engines into two categories. One is spark ignition engine, another is compression ignition, ignition engine. So, this is the sub classification. So, the nomenclature that we can see from this particular schematic depiction is for the SI engine. So, now let me write. So, this is SI engine nomenclature. Why it is SI engine? So, I am telling maybe you are accepting, but by having a look at the schematic depiction you can clearly tell this is spark ignition engine. See we can classify spark ignition or whether whether a engine is spark ignition or comp compression ignition that is of course, depending on the com combustion. You can see that I did not discuss one special device that is called carburetor. So, if I mark it, so this is carburetor and this is throttle valve. So, the function of the carburetor is to provide a homogeneous mixture of air and fuel. So, in the context of the spark ignition engine, it is not only the air which is coming through the intake manifold into the cylinder, instead it is the fuel air mixture. So, for the spark ignition engine, the purpose of this particular device, though it is nowadays almost obsolete, but the entire purpose of this particular device is to supply homogeneous mixture of air and fuel to the engine cylinder and that mixture of air and fuel will go through the intake manifold. That means, the intake manifold is provided to have flow of air to the cylinder, it will, it will go to the cylinder, but pertaining to the spark ignition engine, we also need to supply fuel air mixture not only air. So, this air fuel mixture which is also known as charge is supplied. So, basically this air plus fuel mixture which is known as charge, this charge is supplied to the engine cylinder through the intake manifold. So, the you know presence of this particular device indicates that it is a spark ignition engine. Not only that, most important part that I should now discuss is this spark plug. So, 
we know that uh, combustion should initiate and combustion should be completed and it is because of this process we will be getting some energy and that energy will allow piston to go back from TDC to BDC that is all we have understood till now. So, we have to initiate combustion you have seen that if you go to kitchen room and you will see that if you open the you know gas knob and by opening the switch you need to bring a lighter to initiate combustion. So, basically the spark plug is spark plug is acting just like an external agent to initiate combustion for this particular type of engine. That means, we are taking fresh air and fuel that is charged into the cylinder and that charge will not ignite automatically instead we need to initiate ignition by making use of this particular device that is spark plug. So, the spark plug is an external agent which is provided to the spark ignition engine essentially to initiate combustion and it is because of the presence of the spark plug the known as spark ignition engine. So, the ignition is not taking place automatically rather ignition is initiated by making use of this particular device and which is spark plug. So, this is spark plug engine nomenclature. Now, issue is if we would like to see what are the components for the compression ignition engine the same parts will be there except spark plug and carburetor. For the compression ignition engine you can understand the spark is not there in that particular type. So, the use of spark plug will not be there instead there will be one nozzle. So, this spark plug should be replaced. So, this should be replaced by a fuel nozzle for CI engine and carburetor is not there for CI engine. So, this is the difference. So, that means, we can use the same schematic for the nomenclature of CI engine provided spark plug is replaced by a fuel nozzle and carburetor is removed from this intake manifold. right? So, what will happen for the compression ignition engine? Compression ignition engine only air should be drawn into the cylinder in one stroke and that air should be compressed and when the air is compressed at the end of the compression process pressure and temperature of the air is sufficient to initiate co you know combustion without any help of external agent like spark plug. So, this is the difference between CI and SI engine. So, fuel will ignite automatically at that prevailing thermodynamic condition of the compressed air. So, the air fresh air that would be taken not air fuel mixture for the compression ignition engine only air should be taken through the intake manifold to the cylinder and at the end of the compression process the thermodynamic state of the compressed air is good enough to initiate combustion when fuel is sprayed by a fuel nozzle into the cylinder. So, this is you no know, this is basically auto ignition. So, fuel will auto ignite at that condition of the uh, compressed air. So, this is basically the fundamental difference between spark ignition and CI ignition uh, spark ignition engine and CI that is compression ignition engine. So, now we also can classify another type that is depending on the number of stroke. So, again let me write here this can be sub classified into two categories one is known as four stroke engine another one category is known as two stroke engine okay 
So, though we have discussed very little about the spark ignition and compression ignition engine today in the context of the nomenclature, we have also seen that engine can be classified based on the number of stroke that is whether four strokes are there to execute the total cycle or only two stroke can be uh, uh, you know can be designed to complete the cycle. So, that part together with the you know fundamental difference between spark ignition and compression ignition engine will be discussed in the next class. So, with this I stop here today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.